everyone, Linda Reed and everyone, welcome to another Tips Tuesday session. This week we are delving in to something I think affects all business owners and course creators alike, and that comes to the moment in time where you've got to store those digital assets, those files, and understand what the heck are you doing with all that information you collect? Because as business owners, I get it, we actually collect quite a bit of stuff. We've got subscriptions, we've got files, we've got all of those things, and our digital assets add up. So I'm just going to quickly share this through to our Course Creator Circle community at BBB uh, so that I can share it with those people there and we can get started with our live session today. So if you're first time tuning into a Tips Tuesday session, say hi, let me know where you're tuning in from, let me know what your business is and let me know what it is that you do along the way. What is it that you do? Um, what type of files are you trying to store? All of those sorts of things and we will delve in two seconds in the line and make sure that uh, we are being able to um, yeah, help you store those digital assets along the way. <laughs> and I really think I need more coffee. This morning has been a full on morning already. So let's have a look at what happens when we're, we're looking at storing and we're looking at organizing those digital assets um, that we have in our businesses. So I'm gonna run you through the process we use here. Um, and just let you know what it is that works for us. Um, now, it may work for you or it may not work for you. Um, oh, God, I can't spell. There we go. Done. Okie dokie. So what, what, what is it that you store? What are you looking at storing? Please feel free to pop in the comments. What are you looking at storing? So in our case here, we have bios, we have documents, we have videos, we have social images, we have passwords, we have emails, we have client contacts, and we have all of those things that we need to store along the way when it comes to storing the documentations in our business. Now, for the client contact and the client information, I'm a strong believer in CRM. So using a, a client management system, good morning, Kathy, how are you this morning? Uh, good morning, Lorraine. She's cur currently decluttering many areas of life. Well, I, I hope that this session is going to help you this morning. So there there are so much stuff that we have within our life. So I'm a big believer in the client management stuff that we put it into a CRM and we use a client management system. Now we use a client management system and a project manager. We use Salesflare for our client management stuff. It's what I tend to call like a lazy person CRM. It tracks the emails, it tracks the calls, it tracks the calendar bookings and all of those things along the way for you to be able to look at it from there. When we're doing our projects and when we're doing our work and keeping ourselves accountable, that's when we use a tool called ClickUp and ClickUp is our project manager and it allows us to be able to know what we've got to do. We put our checklists in there so that we remember, hey, did we do that? Uh, and we don't forget the little steps along the way that come through on the day-to-day -day side of, of doing things. So when we talk about managing our client communication or our project communication, they're the two things that we do there. And that's not really the focus we really want to delve into today. I want to delve into more about how do you store those digital assets. But I'll pop those two, come back later and I'll pop the two links into the tool description. By Salesflare and ClickUp being um, partners, we've got referral opportunities for you to be able to you know, have, a, have a look and, and take a trial of both of their accounts. And they're both pretty phenomenal tools along the way. Okay, so the first thing when we've got our, our files and our digital emails is I believe cloud storage is your friend. <laughs> uh, so you've got Google, Doc Drive, uh, Drop, Dropbox, all of those things out there that will help you be able to store OneDrive. There's, there's all different ways and it really comes down to your head uh, and how your head works and also your budget in lots of ways because some are a little bit more expensive than the others. Um, some come with your G Suite accounts uh, and all of those things from there and it also comes down to accessibility and usability. Uh, Jane just says to me she's setting up so many systems for our growing business photos and videos is what she's working on storing right now. You'll like this session today and actually it was Jane's question that started me on this Tips Tuesday session for you guys today. So the thing is we have right here is there is all of those cloud storages. But the beautiful thing about cloud storage is, is if you get the black screen of death, which I have done on many of my computers on many times, I'm back up and running on a new computer because everything's stored on the cloud inside half an hour. And I can possibly even download and sync everything up on a new computer up, in, up inside half an hour. And that's, in, but if I don't have a computer in the ha in the office, um, then I've got to go to JB Hi-Fi or Officeworks or Harvey Norman and go and get one. So that might just take me just a little bit of time. But cloud storage is your friend when it comes to business because there's no, oh my God, my hard drive just disappeared or anything like that comes through. Now we chose to use, we've used Dropbox, we've used OneDrive, we've used many of the tools before, but we chose to use Google Drive for our team collaboration and our team storage. 
um, for a number of reasons. One, it brings with it the power of Google search. Number two, Google Docs means that we can all be in there working on a spreadsheet or a document all together live in real time, see what each other's doing and be able to comment on what's going on in that document or system. So that's another reason that we use uh, Google Drive. So we, that's the other thing for that. And then the final and top reason that we use Google Drive is it brings in the power of Google search. So when you name your files well, which is what we're about to cover next, and you use your folders well, you can put in keywords and searches and it will not only search the file titles, but it will search the documents for the keywords that you're looking for. And that to us when it comes to search is very, very important. Um, being able to bring that Google search to the forefront to being able to do those things from there. Okay, so now that we've worked out that we're going to go with the cloud storage, the next component is, is folders are your friends. Okay, so start with folders. Um, you can get, by all means, just dump everything up there. But if you start with folders, you start with a little bit more organization system. And all we got to do is think about folders like a, a dedicated filing cabinet. It's That's all we're doing is we're using folders to do those sorts of things. So you might start with your overall arching folder for whatever business it is, and you might name that whatever the business business or the operation or the project or the, or the area that you're working on is. And you might call it XYZ project or whatever it is that you want to call from there. Okay, then you can build in subfolders from there. So it might be videos, it might be images, it might be related. So what we tend to do is we tend to have an overall arching folder for whatever brand that we're working on. And then we have subfolders, which are the projects or the courses or the workshops, all those things that we are working on for that brand. And then we start to develop it out. And those project folders tend to match the project boards that we have inside ClickUp. And they match through and they map through so that when we're providing the boards and that there's one space uh, that we're providing access to. And then we can share access to that folder for that particular team that's involved on that particular project at that point in time. So we're not having to worry about so much you know, storage uh, sharing opportunities. Um, so folders, your friends, so use them. Start setting out your folders and you know, grab some post-it notes and start to have an overall look about what folders do I think I need? And then start to move them around. And don't be afraid to rename them, remove them, merge them into duplicate folders and all of those sorts of things. But the next thing, and this is really key, and it's something that frustrates me when, I, when I'm an editor, uh, and all of those things is naming your files really well is the next step, okay? So naming and describing what the file is, is a really good thing. So if it's an available for interview profile for me, for example, or my speaking profile, we'll say guest speaking profile, Linda Reed Enova, 2021 or whatever we want to talk about and if it's a particular it's a marketing one or it's a course creator circle one or we've done something a bit different we will name what it is the same with our presentations when we name our presentations we name our presentations whatever the name of the file is who's presenting it when and it quite often when it was last updated because we want to know when the updates were based on on what the file is from there so whether it's those things if we've got a document in progress, we'll say in progress, not ready to use. And we'll put that in the title so that no one uses something that they're not meant to use. So when we look at naming our videos and our images in particular, description, describe what's in it. So Jane, I'm, because it's your question, I would maybe probably say photo of Jane in the garden with garlic flowers on a spring day or something like that so that you know what it is and maybe even describe the outfit that you're wearing. If you're doing a promotional video, you might say yoga promotional video uh, uh, of Jane uh, in whatever outfit you were wearing uh, in springtime in the yoga studio or in sunset or with sunny background. Because if you describe them, if you describe what's doing and you name your files well, then that power of search works really well for you coming forward. And it's a lot less harder going, I think I had an image that did that, but I don't know what I called it by describing the image or describing the video, when you name it, when you put the file up there, you've got a better recall and a better power of search coming to you when you start to go look for it. Maybe, you know, six months later down the track or even three or four years later, we go, I think there's an image out there of me doing something like that. Or I think we've got a shot of the farm based in those areas. And if there's things that are going to be time dated and you want to you know, run a time stream, add the date to the file, add the date of when the photo was taken because that all the video was taken and that will really help. So folders are your friends, naming those files really well are the next, next thing that you need to do. Um, and then I just want to talk about a couple of other digital added assets that you have along the way within your business. So passwords are another thing that you're going to have. You're going to remember them. Now, I've seen lots of people with password books. I've seen them with password spreadsheets. Uh, the thing that we use, and we use a tool called LastPass. And LastPass encrypts our passwords. Once again, if I lose my computer, I lose my spreadsheet, I'm not relying on some, it being stored in the cloud for someone else to be able to access it. I've got an encrypted database of 
of passwords that I can access via LastPass. We also use it for our clients to share their passwords with us so that we don't see their passwords. Okay, so that when we're using a password for a client, we don't have to see the password, but we're able to log in and do whatever we need to do for them along those ways. So LastPass is a good one for managing passwords. Uh, once again, we're a LastPass partner, so I'll pop a link in later and you can go give it a shot. Uh, they've got a free account and a paid account, um, but your paid account's about $12 a year. So it uh, takes all those passwords out of your head and that stress, and you're able to then share your passwords with a bit of faith um, and not have to remember them. And it's got a mobile app as well. Um, so I quite often use the mobile app. Once again, computer dies, LastPass brings you back up with all your passwords. And you're like, what was my Microsoft login? What was my Google login? What was this login? Oh, I lost the spreadsheet or I don't have the notebook. You you actually got everything at your fingertips and it takes a lot of stress and pressure away from your brain. And you can always, and I do strongly suggest this, download a backup file every now and again, just in case, you know, something with the software goes corrupt and you need to bring those passwords somewhere somewhere else and, you know, store them on a hard drive or a USB somewhere just in case you need them over time. Okay, the other thing is the browsers that you use, they have bookmarks, okay? If you are using sites on a regular basis or you want to have a series of sites for videos or a series of sites for images or a series of sites that you use on a regular basis, use your bookmarks and your folders, okay? So you, you can bookmark, but you can also bring them into folders. So you might have video tools, you might have image tools, you might have logins, you might have, a, um, you know, SEO tools. So use your bookmarks to work with you as well, which is a really good one. And then we've got the final digital asset that comes with the world of marketing and content creation and running our business, and that is subscriptions. So we subscribe to things and look, hey, I'm good at it. I love subscribing to things here. Um, and then maybe we forget what our subscription is or we forget that, you know, that one's due to renew. So a couple of tips on dealing with subscriptions. I strongly suggest writing down the tools you have access to in a spreadsheet when they're due to renew and also going that one step further and then putting the renewal dates a week or so out in your calendar or 30 days or so out in your calendar and just remind yourself, am I using this tool still? Am I using it to its best? Is this, you know, reoccurring subscription going to be worthwhile? And if it's not, then you unrenew, you unsubscribe and you unrenew it. So guys, there's some tips for you all about managing those digital assets. I hope they've helped you. I hope that you are out there going to manage some of those digital assets. And in the next little while, I'll come back and I'll pop the links in the comments of these videos here so that you can delve in and try and use some of the tools that we're using in-house to manage your digital assets and, you know, start getting in there and knowing where those tools are and being able to find things. But remember, the number one tip to managing any asset is naming your files and folders really well because that is going to help you when it comes to search. I will see you again next week. Bye.